Guys, it should be <laughs> illegal. You ever just wake up to feel this good? And you just stare into the light in the ceiling of your room and you say, I feel so good right now. You ever just wake up and say to yourself, Thank God I'm alive. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Thank when God I, this just wasn't the end. When I wake up every day, I say three things. You know what they are? No, tell me. Deemsters, dumpster fires, drugs. Drugs. Uh, you know what? Speaking of, folks, uh, yeah, since I'm feeling so great right now and I'm not that hungover, I'd like to publicly. For the first time ever. I'd like to publicly announce on the podcast that I am using drugs again. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I. Ow. My fucking body hurts. My whole th- my whole system hurts. You know when those girls talk about auras and chakras and whatnot? Yeah. I feel like even that hurts right now. You know, dude, my, my yeah, chakras like, are like, depleted right depleted, now. It's depleted, dude. My, my I fucking feel like pineal I'm, gland is calcifying <laughs> at insane rates. Dude, if I was wearing some of those crystals that those girls love to wear, I would need at least 10 of them to share my vibrations. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I'd probably try I feel try like to I'm Virgo rising right now. I'm Mercury and Taurus. And dude, you take one of those crystals, load them up, put it right on my say, asshole. We're never going home. <laughs> dude, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I think Mercury's in retrograde. Yeah. Can, By the way, I'm feeling that. The way I'm feeling, dude. Uh yeah. We we talked about it last week that we've never done one of these podcasts in a state of just total and utter sobriety. And it looks like that tradition will continue. Yeah. For quite some time. We're not drunk. We're not high, but. We're worse than that. Boy, am I hungover. It's what you get to Boy, watch. Boy, am I a juice box. What you get to watch every week. You know, it's really interesting because I wonder what we would be like if we weren't hungover. Because every time you've watched us, our livers were literally still processing the poison alcohol through our bodies and trying to cleanse us. I know for me, at least, I would be way more sharp and pronounced. Like, I feel like I'll watch the podcast sometime. Sometimes. I, there you go. I watch it sometimes and I just say words that aren't real or like <laughs> I use them in the wrong tense and I'm just like people are going to think I'm an absolute moron. They're yeah. like look at this stupid dirty Ginzo wop <laughs> spaghetti bending grease ball from New Jersey. Listen folks, it's because every time you've watched us it's literally within 3 hours of us waking up of a night of bending. Yeah. And if Water there's one bending. thing that we're good at it's bending. Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts, man. It's all fun and games now. But if you let it Go off for too long. One day you end up like the guy at um, McDougal Street Ale House in New York. He's just sitting at the bar all alone. <laughs> I was sitting. I was sitting there the day before my birthday, watching this guy. Just like, look at this sorry sack. Wait, you were there chilling, and you just saw this guy alone. He was the bar. there alone. It, it, he he must have just gotten off work. He was dressed for work. What time uh, of day was it? Um, five forty-five. All right. But he he was there when I walked in, so he I I was watching him for a good forty five minutes, and he wasn't doing much. He was having beers. He kept talking to the bartender about craft beer, so you know you could imagine the type of guy he is. <laughs> and he what got me though was at one point, I don't even remember what song it was, but a song came on, like at the bar off the jukebox, and the guy like he like oh. And then he grabbed his drink, looked over to the jukebox, and he raised his drink to it. He raised his beer to the jukebox. Jesus. And I was, I was, I sat, and I'm like, this, this cannot be real. How old was this guy? Thirty-five. Ah, see, I knew. I hate those fucking guys. I know exactly what you're talking about. It was first off, what you just described was the most depressing. Dude, it was so depressing. But I'll tell you exactly what kind of guy this is. This is that guy that you see in those situations like that. You'll be in a public social setting with maybe some friends or you're doing your own thing. And you see a guy who's like early 30s, not that old, but he dresses like an asshole, like wears some like unusual clothes. Maybe he wears one of those newsy caps, especially in New York. You see these guys, right? <laughs> newsy you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. And he like thinks he's 60 years older than he is. So like he's this jerk off sitting there alone, probably just got off his job at some fucking website probably works for a website yeah he works for GoDaddy. he's like a real piece of shit though like he like loves to talk about bourbon and craft beer and he's wearing his little newsies cap and he goes <laughs> to the bar alone because he thinks he's romantic and he's like yeah this is what it was like for me in the 20s but like listen jerk off you were born in 85 and 
he that like it's probably some dumb fucking song. It was probably like Piano Man, or it was like it something was, from like the forties. Yeah, 40s. no, it was total. No, it was. It was like Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra drinking again, and he's like, "Cheers to you, yeah. Frank." He's like, "I gotta get back to Chicago." I knew Frank. Yeah, I gotta get back to Chicago. It's like, dude, I I know you. You were born in uh, Massapequa, but well, whatever. it got it got better because another guy came in and he sat right next to him. And and he just looked like any regular guy. He was probably like fifty, you know. Yeah, exactly. Cool. That's the thirty-five year old talking to the fifty. Right, like, right. I'm I'm mature. Like, well, that's exactly what happened. He started befriending <laughs> him, and I don't even know how they got there. But at one point, the the craft beer guy who's you know raising his glass to every inanimate object in the bar, he was <laughs> he was like he's like, dude, you know, you know, with um, a lot of the land. Is national parks. It's all national parks. A lot, of, like a lot more of the land than you would think. Like exactly. That's exactly. And what I'm that just, guy would I'm like, what about. the fuck are you talking about? First <laughs> of all, I feel so bad for this guy because you could tell, like, he's he's trying to be nice, but now you're getting into national parks. Yeah, it's that. That's also what I forgot to mention. This type of guy, like, you could tell they're out alone, but they're looking to make friends. Right. And because right. like, they'll randomly like chime into conversations. Like, huh, yeah, I love that. Right. And that's what that's what it was. And so he started talking about this place. I, I had to bring it up because I wrote it down. It, it all started because they were talking about lagers. And he was like, I fucking love lagers. And the guy's lagers like, the beer, not like lagers. Yeah, yeah, no, like the beer. And the other guy's like, yeah, lagers are sick. And so, we, and so then somehow from lagers, it was about the national parks. And he started talking about this place called um, Raphael Swell. Um, I can look up where it is, but he's talking about Raphael Swell, and he's like, "Dude, it's great. I went there. Great. T- it's like a little Grand Canyon. Like you, j- you're there, and you're just sitting there, and it's a little Grand Canyon." And this was just at a bar on like a what a Friday afternoon? Yeah, Friday afternoon. And he said, "It's so wide open, you know." He's like, "You can literally fuck yourself on the little cannon. It's so cool." And the other guy, Wait, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. He said that? No, no, no. Uh. <laughs> but imagine if he did. But no, he was just saying that. And so the other guy is sitting there being nice. He's saying, that's awesome. It sounds really cool. I've never made my way out there. And so, you know, he said it was the most hikeable place he's ever been. Yep, All the yep, loggers he got to have. like hikes. So at that point, I just felt really sad. I'm like, you know, the goal in life, one of the, the small goals is to not end up like a, like that. You don't want to be that guy. See, but you know what? I don't want to be that guy. I, I think, you know, we started off as talking about cautionary tales of our alcoholism. Right. But I'd like to come in now from third base and say maybe that, that guy's drinking isn't the problem. I think that guy just sucks. You got a point. You know? At you least we're point. cool as fuck. Yeah. You know, when I drink, I'm cool when I do it. Yeah, and we we bend mad spaghetti. Yeah, we don't fucking talk about national parks. We talk about cool shit like doing drugs. <laughs> We will like talk about like we got to get back to the '80s era of crack. It's you know? <laughs> like good shit. We talk about subprime mortgages and tax fraud. Exactly, that's what we do. Um, and, and then like we'll talk about we'll talk about like cool concerts we're going to. Whereas like him, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go see Miles Davis's great great grandson do the doo wop. I'm I'm going to see Tony Schnapp Shapiro. Yeah. At the New England Jazz Festival, he's playing a, Karen, a clarinet yeah. concerto. Yep. <laughs> No, but said I got the three day pass. Folks, this weekend I'm not going to be around because I will be in Asbury Park for a music festival called See You Here Now. Should be a lot of fun. I'm going with some friends, a lot of cool artists that I like, alternative bands, Orville Peck, The Happy Fits, Matt and Kim. I think Pearl Jam will be there. But, you know, 80s Joel cover band. 80s Joel cover bands. I'm excited to be there, but you know, I will be you know, out of town, so that's why we're doing the pot a little bit early, but Joe, have you been? Have we ever been to a music festival together? We were supposed to go to that one. In to the Meadows, to yeah, Meadows, but you yeah. were sick and gave your ticket to Tundo. Yeah, I traded. I traded my ticket for a Red Hot ticket. Was that what it was? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It so was. Yeah. It was worth the trade. Me and Tundo, Red Hot's crushed. The, that, crushed was that was dope. Me great. and Tundo went to that concert. The Meadows, our freshman year, and it was wild. It was. We saw like Borns. We saw. You guys Cage saw. You Elephant. guys saw Kanye get pulled off stage. We saw Kanye, Kanye West. Robbed. Yeah, that was like part of the Pablo tour, technically. And Kanye literally left in the middle. Of, that was that famous concert where, in the middle of it, he just got someone whispered something to him, and he's like, "Family emergency," and walked off the stage. We're like, "What the fuck?" And that was when we found out Kim Kardashian had just been um, robbed yeah. in France. I think yep. at gunpoint. It was in Paris. Yeah. 
pretty wild. But that was a great concert. Uh, me somehow we were getting Tall Boys. I think they weren't IDing us, and me and Tendo just blacked out. And Tendo like, yeah, it was good. That's a fun time. It was a fun time. Yeah, we but Red Hot Chili Peppers we went to. That, that was, was that really same dope. year. I just remember. Well, I remember leaving that concert, and like the one reoccurring thought in my head was, how in the fuck. At 56, I guess uh, at the time. How does Anthony Kiedis do it? Like, he was running around the stage. All of them, dude. Like Flea a fucking too. mad... Yeah, dude. And all the damage he's done to himself. Oh, my God. Yeah, we read... I didn't read Flea's books, but no, I read no, Anthony I have, Kiedis' I haven't read book. It. Yeah, Scar Tissue. Great you, shit. Dude, you know, you remember the story how I read Scar Tissue, right? I was in, like, seventh grade. And yeah. You, like, you had my Kindle, and you were, like, fucking around with it, and you accidentally just bought Scar Tissue. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? That like, costs money. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. And then I was like, well, let me fucking read it now. And it was amazing. It changed my life. That guy was a dirty drug addict. Though. He was a junkie. He was. So, speedballing. But he was just a brilliant, brilliant musician. They had such an incredible story. So we've been big friends forever. I saw them when I was in eighth grade. I saw them then. I think I've seen them twice now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was a crazy concert. I always regret that because you guys, we all had a great time. But that was in our early college days. And that was the Evan Williams days. So I don't know if we've brought this up on the podcast yet, but. Freshman year of college, me and Joey D lived together in New York on the 26th floor of a, the world's tallest dorm building, I think. Um, yeah. We had a little Some, kitchen. That's, that's the only fucking accolade that they can they can uh, flex to everyone. Yeah, but. fuck that place. Um, but we had a you know a little kitchen, which was nice. We had a little refrigerator, and um, we would just keep a bottle of Evan Williams in the freezer at all times. And what yeah. Evan Williams is, it looks exactly like a J- uh, Jack Daniels bottle. Mm-hmm. It, the logo looks exactly like Jack Daniels. It's supposed to be the same thing as Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey. But it's just like a third of the price, and it's not as good. It's a third of the quality. It's a third of the quality. Perfect. Too. But, you know, me and Joey D being romantic New Yorkers at the time would just slam fucking straight whiskey before every time we went out. So that night we were pre-gaming in it our It makes apartment. you feel really good. Uh, you feel great afterwards, and you definitely don't every get out of over. Every time. But I think Tundo came over. I we feel like I could throw up all over myself right now. <laughs> just thinking about it. I'll never forget, actually. You know what? Tundo came to the dorm. We went to Midtown Restaurant across the street first. It was nearing the end of the semester, so I was running low on money. So I got something simple like a sandwich. And do you know what you ordered? I probably ordered a steak dinner. You ordered the steak dinner because we had you caps. had meal dollars. We so. had meal. Do- yeah, explain to them our meal system at Marymount and like why we never ate at the so school the, and only at a so diner. At some colleges and universities, they'll give you a meal plan because they have a food court, and it'll be something along the lines of, hey, you get 300 meals each semester, so every time you go to the food court and swipe it, that's a meal, and you could eat as much as you want, all you can eat, whatever. When you go to college in a city, especially in New York, they don't give you meals. What they'll do is they'll say, you get $2,000 a semester for meal dollars, and so you can use that to buy food at their food court. Or use it at participating restaurants. They had a few restaurants that used their meal dollars. One of them being a little diner in Midtown called Midtown Restaurant. It's not. It doesn't exist anymore. I think uh, COVID knocked oh, it out. Oh, they closed? Yeah. Fuck, dude. But, but anyway. Numbers. Shout out Gigi, the waitress. Yeah, Gigi. She was a savage. And um, anyway, being the young whippersnapper that I was, I kind of saw these meal dollars as not real. They were fake. They were like, monopoly money. I was like, oh, it's monopoly money. So instead of going to the diner and getting like a a, a, a humble meal that I can But you know, also, Joey didn't mention we only exclusively use these meal dollars at the diner yeah, because yeah. the only other alternative was to walk to this tiny ass lunchroom yeah. on our campus, which was 15 blocks up. Yeah. And it sucked. Yeah. The only time it was good was when they were doing tours. If they were doing a tour, the food was fucking amazing, and people would walk through and be like, wow, this is the food here? Yeah, I've, I've had, like, fucking buffalo chicken tofu there. Yeah. Okay, and so shit. we'd go to Midtown, and I would say, well, hey, this is Monopoly money, so why wouldn't I eat good? So every time I went there, I would get a, a black Angus steak, medium rare, mushroom caps on top of it, with fries. So this is a diner steak in New and York it w- City, And it folks. would cost so it's me like, like 25 bucks, right? Yeah, but my meal every time was usually somewhere around like $38. Yeah, and, then I would and you could tip. tip. You had to tip on it because you don't want to fuck the waitress so, over, but you're tipping with your meal dollars. And I think we both only had like two grand a semester. Yeah, so pretty much 
the you know long story short i ran out of meal dollars probably like a month and yeah, a half like, before the semester ended <laughs> every every year yeah every semester so we went to the diner that night for the red hot chili peppers concert i paid for tundra's meal with my meal dollars i probably had a sandwich joey had a steak and we came back and just started like drinking full cups of evan williams so I'm doing so much Evan Williams, and by the time we get to the concert, I'm just fucked up. So I have always regret it because I barely remember that concert. I remember it was dope. We were at Madison Square Garden, but I was very inebriated that night. But I remember it being a good concert. We met up with our friends after. We were all at the subway station. I just remember being like, hey, does anyone have a, a, a fucking a ticket or whatever, the, the Metro card? And Dan just like immediately hopped the fucking turnstiles, and I was like, all right, fuck it. We all just hopped the turnstiles. And we went to good old-fashioned Malloy's that night and had a great night of drinking and fun at our favorite Irish pub that served us underage. Yeah, it was a great time. Yep. That was a fun night, man. You have any other good concert stories? Oh, a year, a, a couple months after that was the classic. I went to that panorama in New York City at Governor's Island, I think, with, like, Tundo and Stambouli and all my friends. And we were going because Frank Ocean was playing. We love fucking Frank Ocean. This was right a year after Blonde came out, a year after Endless came out. Tyler, the creator, was going to be there, too. This was, like, two weeks after Flower Boy came out. Yeah. We saw some really cool cool alternative bands that day that I don't really remember. But we get to this concert at, like, 11 a.m. We drive in with a big group of friends. We're fucking hammering vodka out of water bottles in a parking garage at 11 a.m. Just gross. We stop at a bodega. We're fucking pounding 40s on a walk across the bridge to the place. Folks, I think I g- we're back again, and we're proud, very proud, to talk about our favorite company sponsor, the Wallet Wallet. It's a wallet for your wallet. Now, as you guys that have been following along know, there's been some issues with shipping and logistics with the Wallet Wallet. They're a great company, but they're a startup. you got to give them a break. You know, we have some interesting customer fan testimonials. Last week, we received a wallet wallet in the package. It was just kind of a mistake, and the wallet wallet wasn't there. It was glass and a map of Cuba. Um, but, you know. Which we, we still haven't deciphered whatever military <laughs> offensive that was. We're, so. Yeah, and, and it's no big deal. I think it was just a mix-up. You know, our friend Birdo, as you saw in last week's episode, he got his wallet wallet. It did come in a pangolin, but that happens sometimes. But we're proud to announce it today. We finally got our wallet wallet in the mail. And we're gonna we're gonna finally open it on air, and you get to really see a wallet wallet. And from the looks of the package, they did not subscribe to ShipStation. Um, no. And that you looks know what? Like a Trader Joe's. You bag. know, this looks like a Trader Joe bag. But listen, you know, there's probably a shortage of you know boxes to ship in. I get it. You know what I'm saying, folks? Like at this point, we just want to get the product. Yeah, we just want to so show you at least how have much we love product. the product. So yeah. let's go ahead and open this up. You know, it's, at least it's taped, and you know. Is seems to be like a Trader Joe bag, and let's see the wallet wallet. What? God damn it. Um, they seem to have given us a handgun. Is that looks like a M9? Is this real? Yeah, it's yeah, it's. Is it's, it loaded? It's real. I don't, I don't know if it's loaded. Don't Jeez, fucking. it's fucking heavy. And on top of that, they gave us a copy of Twilight New Moon um, soundtrack on CD. It seems to be used. If you could see that, it's Twilight that New is, Moon. Um, that's definitely a real handgun. So um, it feels good in your hand. You know, this this soundtrack features Death Cab for Cutie, Tom York, uh, Bon Iver. Uh, great. Well, I... <sighs> Why? What? You think this is a mistake? Because why? It is loaded. Don't even touch it. I can't fucking deal with wallet. I'm sorry, wallet, wallet. But we're really grateful that you guys sponsor us. But what the fuck? Is it like we're gonna kill you at twilight? (coughs) You think there's any? You think they're purposely sending us this shit and there's messages to it, or you think this is just a mistake and they didn't mean to send us a handgun and the Twilight New Moon original motion picture soundtrack on? This looks like what they would get issued in like Afghanistan. It has like a desert scheme going. It's really heavy. It feels good though, and you I feel. How are they even allowed to just send handguns through the mail like that? Yeah, with no postage, by the way. It's almost as if they like got your address and just came and dropped it off. Yeah, well, well, that makes me feel comfortable. We should get that out. Yeah, go ahead and we'll put those away from yeah. each other. You hold the gun. I'll hold the clip. Yeah. 
Um, all right, well. Go to the wallet yeah. wallet.com folks. I mean, what could I say, Joe? Give him the, the info. Um, yeah, that's www.thewalletwallet.com slash goodcrack. And you're going to use code wallet for your wallet for 8% off your order. Um, hopefully one of these weeks. Th- it, there's no fucking CD fucking in the CD thing. In it. it's just the case. Are you it's fucking the kidding case me? To Twilight New Moon original motion picture soundtrack. All right. Folks, go, go get the wallet wallet. Yeah, go the wallet wallet. Thank you. It's a wallet for your wallet. I think I gooch an entire water bottle of warm vodka. Perfect. Get to this island where they're doing the concert and we're just fucked up all day. Fucked up drinking warm vodka out of my gooch bottle. <laughs> um, barely getting any water because there's so many fucking lines. It's so hot and muggy out. The food was like $60 for a fucking pizza. It was terrible. And this is like a big thing. I didn't realize at the time, but like I read like Wik- uh, Reddit pages after this that like at festivals, it's a huge problem where it's like everyone's dehydrated and they have tents for like the thousands of people that pass out. But I make it through the whole day. We're having a good time. We're really waiting until the end of the night because Frank is the last person to go on. Right before Frank goes on, Tyler the Creator is on like two hours earlier. We go see him. It's awesome. We're jumping around. We're getting all sweaty. It's really tight though. So you're hot. Everyone's radiating heat. It's like it's a tight place to be. So by that point, I'm I'm drunk. I'm dehydrated. It's been all damn fucked up. So then we start getting ready for Frank. And everyone in the world is getting ready for Frank. It looks like Woodstock. So we're pushing through this crowd of a thousand people to go see Frank on the main stage. And we get pretty fucking far up. And we're not just there with our group. We have other groups of friends we met up with, all these people. We're all there. And I just remember getting to a really good position, and it's just we're waiting for Frank. He's not, he's not coming out. He's not coming out. We're all waiting. And then as I hear the story goes, is we're all standing there. We're really tight, kind of pushed together. I'm next to my two best friends, Mark Pressler, Joey Stambouli, Matt Tundo. And they said, Stambouli was right behind me, and he said, like, I just started, like, leaning on him really hard. And he's like, Matt, fucking stop. He thought I was, like, fucking with him because I was just, like, leaning my whole weight on him. And then he says, like, he turned me around, and my eyes were just fluttering, and I just went down, like, literally collapsed. Passed out. Sack of bricks. Like a sack of bricks. Lost all motor function in my body. I lost my glasses, like, my prescription glasses. They, I don't remember this at all, but Joey and Matt picked up my unconscious body dragged me through a crowd of like thousands mark was pushing people out of the way they literally i felt so bad for them because they thought i died and they were dragging me through a crowd of hundreds of people it's nuts and the next thing i know i'm on the floor and i'm just waking up to fucking eight water bottles being poured right in my fucking face i was like being water and i was all fucked up and they're like matt are you all right are you all right i'm like yeah yeah what the fuck happened like you you fainted i'm like oh shit dude i must be dehydrated so Joey had to buy me like eight water bottles. They were like twelve dollars a pop. He spent like a hundred dollars on water bottles. I rehydrate. I'm good. I'm up, and I feel bad because right when I come to and like I'm feeling good again, Frank Ocean's coming out, <laughs> and like I'll never forget it. Joey and Matt were like, "Dude, we got to get you to like a hospital or like the doctor's tent or something." And I'm like, "No, dude, fuck that. We're going to go see Frank Ocean. That's what we came here to do." So we go and watch Frank. It was the most incredible performance. But I felt so bad because, like, I'm enjoying it watching the concert and Tundo and Joey are just staring at me the entire time. Like, is this kid going to fucking die again? Like, I'm just watching it and, like, every five minutes or so, Stan Bully would just, like, slowly pour a half of a bottle of water on me. He's like, you need to cool off. I'm like, thanks, dude. <laughs> like, I felt so bad. Like, I am probably ruined their night. And the worst part was I had, I lost my glasses, but I had, like, prescription sunglasses on me. So I just had, at like, 12 o'clock at night, I just had to wear prescription sunglasses. Like I probably look like a douchebag. But, I had, yeah, my eyes are so bad. Yeah, festivals are a little fucked. I don't know. I, I, for this one, I will most certainly hydrate better. Yeah, you, you have any crazy it. concert festival experiences? I mean, I went to a lettuce concert a month and a half ago, and I wish that I passed out there because... Who's was... lettuce again? Explain to the audience. Lettuce is a, um... Lettuce is a jam band. Um... A lot of just instrumental music, no lyrics really, and they just jam the fuck out, you know, like Grateful Dead esque type sound. Just they just go off. And I went to one. I was up in Lake George, and uh, me and my two buddies were like, "Fuck it, let's go tonight. It should be funny, you know. It'll be a fun crowd." And it was a fun crowd, all right. It was a crowd of vermin, um, you know, just. Deadheads 
but not deadheads. Like, I've met a few deadheads, and they're out there, but it was, like, cool. These were, like, wannabe deadheads, you know? Yeah. Like, they're like, nah, man, dead sucks, dude. Lettuce is where it's at, man. And where are you getting? You're in Lake George? So you're, like, deep New York State? Yeah, yeah. Who knows who fucking lives out there? Well, dude, I saw the craziest one of the... I remember seeing a guy there, and all I could think to myself was, what a wild card. I see a guy, he's all camo, right? All camo. And I'm like, oh, look at this guy. Like, he's at lettuce wearing all camo. Everyone else is in drug rugs. He's wearing all camo. And I'm like, dude, what is he doing here? All of a sudden, he turns around, and he's wearing a camo hat, and across the front of it, it says Black Lives Matter. I was like, wait, hold the fuck up. What is go? This is such a wild card. I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. He looks like some guy that would, like, storm the Capitol, and then he's, not to mention he's wearing all camo, and he has the Black Lives Matter camo cap. And so I'm like, all right, I guess we're getting down tonight. Like, cool crowd. Yeah. And then... Everyone else there was just high on drugs and deemsters and ketamine and everything you can imagine. Where we, was this though? The, so you were camping in yeah, Lake George? We were ca- yeah, we were camping but right then around. There was like what, area. like a town center? In like the center of Lake George downtown, there's like a humongous grass field that overlooks the lake, and they'll do like events, concerts there, and that's pretty much what it was. They had a giant stage, open grass. Everyone was just. They were still doing like the COVID booths. Oh, really? So you had to be sectioned off? Yeah, but it was like just string on a pole. (laughs) Was it just you and your friends? Me and my friends, and when we got to our booth, there was like a bunch of purses there, and we're like, well, we're here and they're not. (sighs) And so then these chicks came back, and they're like, oh, you stole our space? And we're like, yeah, we're renting it out. And they were like, they were fun. They played along. And so they were like, you guys can hang. So we started hanging with them. And... um. How were they? What kind of girls were they? Were they your age? They were not. They were definitely not lettuce girls. They they looked like they belonged at like the Michael Kors convention in northern <laughs> New Jersey, but um yeah, I thought they were, and then all of a sudden one was thirty two, and I'm like oh okay, and then the other one was thirty three, and then the other one was thirty something, and she had two kids, and we're just like holy shit, so like, why are you guys here? <laughs> and the one girl. She said, I don't know. She's like, I fucking hate this. Like, this sucks. And the whole concert, she was complaining about how much it sucked. And sure, it's lettuce. I was vibing out. I wasn't having the time of my life. I'm like, what? Then fucking leave. Get out. She's like, you know what? We're, we're gonna. We're going to this bar. You guys should come. And we're like, yeah. Okay, we'll be there. And we ended up going. Oh, you did go? Yeah, we did. What what kind of girls were these? Were they like annoying 30-year-olds? Like, eh, I'm not They were the type of 30-year-olds that you look at them and you're like, oh, a train wreck. You know? That's the they, thing, they, man. Didn't, they had nothing figured out. They were acting like they were 22 years yeah, old. I've, I've had a lot of those experiences. I feel like yeah. that's kind of a rite of passage where you're at a bar, you're an adult now, but you're tw- I'm 23, and then and you I'm meet not, a girl listen, that's like 33, and they're like... Oh my God, you're such a baby! I'm like, what? The f- you're in the same fucking well, right. place, lady. What and are also, you talking about? Well, that, that's my. But thing. they're also like flirting with me. Yeah. And they're like, maybe you. I'm like, but then they're like, but you're so young. I'm like, then why are you fucking even? What are you doing here? Well, that's my thing. I'm not knocking anybody. Like, if neither that's am what I. You Go do. have fun, but don't. I'm be just like, saying, like, you don't. You don't have to know rocket science by the time you hit thirty or have a full fledged family. However, don't come to a place full of twenty year olds and then start acting a fool because then it's like, well, well, then what are you doing here? I'm like, why are you? Why did you buy a ticket to a lettuce concert if you think it sucks? I mean, were you just trying to go meet guys? Well, you said this sucks. These aren't the type of guys you want to meet. I don't know. And so then when we saw them at the bar, they were just complete dumpster fires, just shit faced. <laughs> and we were trying to watch the McGregor fight, and we were kind of just like, "Hey, get lost." <laughs> and they they did. They did. Really? Yeah. So there wasn't any relations that happened between No, any like, of you, guys? you know, everyone exchanged Instagrams and whatever, and they're like, anytime you're in Lake George, hit us up. We're like, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Next time I'm in Lake yeah. George. I'm yeah. out here all the time. Yeah. You get me? I love Lake George. So I guess that was pretty cool. I mean, I've been to a, a, a large amount of concerts ever since, um, like, my freshman year of high school, eighth grade, I was going. I was going to, like, Wiz Khalifa, ASAP Rocky, a PNC. That was fun. Oh, yeah, the PNC concerts were fun. I Fucking saw, like, Kiss there. Yeah, I saw... I saw the Jonas Brothers there. Dude, me and, me and Marty Vibes, one of, like, a very... One of my favorite live music experiences was we went to a New Jabez memorial concert every year. You know New Jabez? No. New Jabez is basically this famous 
Japanese producer and he ended up working with a lot of American hip hop artists and he just makes like he basically created lo fi. Oh, he really? just he no, just he it. started infusing jazz and pop and all these different genres and he was fucking incredible and he died in a tragic car accident when he was like thirty. And so he's really big and just like Japanese culture, hip hop culture, anime culture. He did like anime music too. And so every single year this one famous rapper, Shingo Two, he does a memorial concert and they bring out all these different artists and they just it it was such a cool Where did experience. you go to that? Uh well of course we went to Williamsburg Music Hall. Okay, yeah. But it was She packed my bags last night pre flight. Zero hours. Nine AM. And I'm gonna be high, high as, as a, a kite, kite by then. then. Folks, three, two, one, cigarettes. <laughs> Let's just say this. Last week, it was a little tough, but we've been smoking three, two, one all week. Every day, all week, 10 times a day. And times. I feel cool, man. feel cool and great. And we're smoking like pros now. Look at the way we're holding the cigarettes. Look at the way we're hitting them, inhaling, exhaling. This is what you get. And better health on top of it. Watch all the cool shit I could do. For those at home not watching, I let the smoke out through my mouth and then it went in my nose. Folks, after one week of being on 321 cigarettes all day, every day, not only do I feel healthier, my sex life is better. I was at the doctor the other day and yeah, he said, this is true. He said, Joe, your sperm count is the highest it's ever been. I think he said it was one of the highest he's ever, ever seen. seen. Like it was record numbers. And Joe, what did he ask you? And he he's, said, he's like, he's like, listen, man, whatever you're doing. Keep on doing it. He said to change in diet. Yeah. What is it? And what did I, you say? I'm like, listen, I've been smoking a lot of 321 cigarettes, a lot of Deemsters. And he's like, whoa, 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 hold on. Did and I'm you like, say? I was like, oh, no, he's going to not like the Deemsters. And he's like, did you say 321? 321 cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. I've been recommending 321 cigarettes to all my patients for years. Oh. They're the best cigarettes. They're the most healthy. It's clean, toasted tobacco. And then he looked right at Joey, this doctor, and he said, three. Two, one, one reason. reason to smoke cigarettes. They're fun. They're healthy. They're good for you. They're cool. So, folks, if you want to make your lungs feel better and you want to change that sex life of yours that's dwindling and diminished, go to www.321cigarettes.com slash crack and use code, what was the code again? This week, I believe, it was Cool Crack Kids. Cool Crack Kids. You're going to use Cool Crack Kids. For I believe it was thirty percent off mm -hmm. of your order of either a retail or wholesale box. Just go ahead and take a look and listen to how cool we look and sound. Remember, three, two, one, one reason to smoke, smoke a cigarette. cigarette. Smoke them if you got them. Smoke them if you got them. Okay, yeah. But it was sense. it was great, man. Really fucking. Yeah, great. That sounds really interesting and, and awesome. And I I I wasn't insanely into him at the time but i could tell every person there like it meant the world to them every That's person awesome. there was just glued to it so that was cool yeah but i'm excited to go see some more concerts and live events now that things are going i'm excited dude, to things see are going tim again, man. in fucking oh yeah November. we're going to see tim dylan that'll November. be fucking dude great. i've just been like even this week dude like the last two weeks me and my buddies were just like fuck it let's go to the movies tonight we saw yeah. Free Guy and we saw Shang Chi, yeah. the Marvel movie. They're not like the best movies in the world. I mean, it's hard right now with COVID because all the studios are saving their major releases until things are a little bit cleaner. But like, it's just fun to be out again. Like, I love being at the movies. Yeah, I got to see that um, Bourdain documentary Road Runner a few weeks ago at the theater. That was my first theater yeah. in a while. It's that fun. was great. Dude, why aren't we making any movies right now? When are we gonna get ready to make our first big one? Well. I'm working on that one pick, Burn It All Down, I told you about. No, I'm not familiar. Yeah, it's the guy who's working at the hedge fund, but he doesn't he doesn't have any hands and so Oh, of course. So he's he's so he's about to make so his his name is his name is Albert Wirtz and he's working at a huge hedge fund and the movie mm -hmm. is called Burn It All Down. Uh, I've wrote five drafts already. And yes. basically Oh wait, this is the one that you brought me in on as the co writer in 04. 04. Yeah. And so basically he's about to make the biggest transaction of his career. He sees a huge 
opportunity in the market and he said I can make my clients over a hundred X on their initial investments, but because he doesn't have hands, he presses the wrong key on the keyboard. Yes. Basically he does the opposite. He dumps all of their money into like these securities that end up losing every single dollar they have and pretty much then they're trying to come after him and kill him and he says, You know what? If I'm going down I'm going to bring it all with me. And so he basically goes on this crazy, like, Tom Cruise type bullshit where he just starts yes. burning down their entire organization. And then when you brought like, me in, and it's like hit, like, the people he was doing this for were like criminals and he didn't know it. Yes. So he has to kill them all and burn it all down. And he has no hands, right? Yeah. And when you brought me in as a co-writer, you brought me in because of my work in romantic well, comedies. And then he had no feet at that time. You're the one yes. who said you got to do you know, no hands. He has hands, but don't. Give him hands, take away the hands, give him feet. Yeah. That's what I brought in. Yep. But also I had been working for some time as a as a writer of romantic comedies. So I introduced the love triangle with the character Diane and the character Cynthia. And what it was is Diane had no feet mm-hmm. and Cynthia had no hands. I'm sorry. Cynthia had four hands. Yeah. Yeah. So she had her, her hands would have looked draft, like this. Your first draft had three, but I remember when so you like, refined it. It's like picture a human arm and a hand, right? And it's like and this. there's another hand. Hold it up like. So she would have four hands, you know. So then it was a love triangle because um, Cynthia works with the organization that's trying to kill him, but she's like a femme fatale, and they fall in love. And there's this great scene where they have like no feet sex, mm-hmm. but then. He meets Diane, and she has four hands, so you could imagine what kind of stuff they get down with. And then in the end, after he saves the day, he ends up with Diane, and she cuts off her hands and gives him his hands back. Yep. It's a beautiful story. And it was pretty much like the through line that we're going off of is when you lose it all, you can get it right back. Yeah. And, and so he lost his the hands. The good thing is, who I think one of us was going to play the main character. What was his name? Albert Wirtz? Albert uh, yeah, Albert Wirtz. But he sounded like he had a really cool voice. He sounded like, how did he sound? He would be like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, man, if I get this money in before 1030 a.m., I could I could get 100x on my client's initial investments. Boy, golly, am I hyped yes, about this. Yes, and you were going to play Albert, and I was yeah. going to play the villain. Bro, uh, Dr. Dr. Edward Slansky. Dr. Edward Slansky. Yeah. And I walk in and I'm like, I always have like, what was my catchphrase? Um, it it was, not letting you burn it. Not letting you burn it. Yeah, I was gonna talk yeah. like this the whole time. Ah, hey Albert, Albert, you think you're gonna find me? You're not gonna find me. You're not gonna burn it all. You're not gonna burn it. Cause that's the whole thing. He like Albert's thing. He's like, I'm gonna burn it all down. And I would come in. But I also he'd be like Slansky, you sick son of a bitch. But I also I'm had a foreign accent. What was the foreign accent I was gonna do to what country? Um, I think it was I think Ireland or it was Ireland. Yeah, you're right. It was like oh, it was that same voice, but it was like I'm going to burn it all down. You don't understand, Slan Brooks. What was his last words? Sl- uh, sl- well, Slansky's. You name, fucking yeah. think that you're gonna fucking take me, but you don't know this about fucking me. You're not going to fucking burn anything because I have fought for too long and too hard, too fucking hard to lose any of this money, you fucking cunt. Yeah, dude. You know how Jim Bloom... I love Bloom, Irish people. We mentioned Jim Bloom works in publishing. Yeah. I So I wrote a short story that was featured in The New Yorker in 2012 called Ragtime Ricky. Ragtime Ricky, and beautiful. Now, Tell us the synopsis. That story yeah. makes me cry every time. So Ragtime Ricky is uh, based on a, a kid. He's a less fortunate kid, comes from a broken oh, home. Hold on, let me interrupt. Can I do a little ice ASMR? Yeah. <laughs> Rag. You're just people are listening. They're like, "Why am I aroused all of a sudden?" <laughs> ragtime Ricky, go ahead. Yeah, rag. Listen, Ragtime Ricky. It's about a you know a kid from a broken home, less fortunate kid in uh, South Florida, and he strays away from God, strays away from family, and he pretty much gets caught up in a huge like Deemster underground market, and he's and he's selling DMT, smoking DMT, and he's just in the the drug underworld, right? And he faces a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of adversity. There's like one scene where he's like, "You don't know what it's like to carry this." And then she grabs it. It's like his girlfriend. She's like, "I know exactly how it feels, B- 
because Ricky, I am your mother. And then he's like, what? Brain blast. And then like gunfire shots. Yeah. And then he gets a scholarship to play football. And basically what happens is through that, he overcomes his adversity. He breaks away from like the Deemster cult. And dude, this was the, the story that you wrote where you based the character of the mother on Emily from yes. the diner. Yes, Emily from well, the diner. Give me some of the dialogue that the character so based there's, on Emily. So we talked about Emily last week. Well, no, no, no. You you said his girlfriend first, but Emily is who I base on his correct. He has like a PO officer, like a you know, yes, probation officer. Yes, that's who it was. And like when he was in uh, he's in because he gets parole. into a f- the it, the film opens and he gets into like a crazy fight in the first scene. Well, over the film a bag based on a short story yeah. published in the New Yorker. Well, no, so. I, I failed to mention we're trying to now take this uh, story and create some sort of film. A lot of people you know. are interested in Ragtime, Ricky. Yeah, but anyway, there's a scene. Ragtime is at the, his PO, you know, meeting, and um, oh, ooh, we're getting airdrops. I'll accept that. What? Third Horn Investment ads? What's going on? Dude, I just I think Jim Bloom just sent me some third horn stuff. Third horn investments? Should I bring it up on the screen? Can we? Oh, dude. What? I could bring that up. Yeah, I could bring that Folks, up. Folks, right now we this just is, got a random crazy. airdrop. We don't know who it could be from. There's only two people in the room. But it seems like Jim Bloom might have just gave us a little airdrop. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'll do a little ice aim at this tomorrow when we're waiting. But so, they're going to be turning Ragtime Ricky into this film, and pretty much... Oh, I'll save the story. This is really great. This is really great. I don't know why I can't... Just open that. Oh. Alright, I'll continue. Yeah, continue the ASMR. Exactly what we need. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, that's good stuff, now. Nah. All right, we'll yeah. bring it up later. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring it up later. So anyway. There's a scene where he's at his his at his um his meeting with his uh, probation officer, and Ricky is Italian. He's an Italian kid, and so he's at What's the. What's his me- last name? Uh, Ricky Stagansi. Ragtime Ricky Stagansi. Yes. Yeah. So great cast. He's sitting there and he says, "You know, I don't know what I should do, officer. I feel like it's all just been crumbling down on me. I shouldn't have fought that day. You're right, but what do I know, right?" All I know is fighting. All I know is fighting. My life's been a fight. And she says to him, Well, I'll tell you why. You want to know why your life has always been a fight? Why? Because you're a no good, dirty rotten, spaghetti bending, meatball eating, greaseball ginzo, cock sucking, motherfucking wop. (laughs) That's why. And he says, What? Because I'm Italian? Yeah, because you're Italian. All you Italians do, especially the southern ones, is you sit <laughs> you sit around all day and you eat ciabatta and you eat spaghetti and you eat clams. And garlic. And garlic. You rub the fucking garlic all over yourselves. <laughs> you guys are so scared of aluminum free. Meanwhile, you're using fucking garlic as deodorant. And that's what you do. And that's why your life's always been a fight. You're never not going to get out of that fight. The only day you're gonna get out of that fight is when you finally walk away from the whopness that is your household. The only time you're gonna get away is when you finally denounce Catholicism. The only time you are going to get away, Ricky, is when you finally look in the mirror, you take off the wife beater, you put on a collared shirt, and you say, I'm a stupid spaghetti bend in Ginzo Wop. And then he's like, officer, I I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never worn a, a wife beater, as you call it. I call it a tank top. But I'm actually embarrassed of being Italian because yeah. of like the treatment I get. So I don't even I don't even know how you figured it out. Well, of course I can figure it out. How did you know? Spaganzi. <laughs> it's not Jewish. It's definitely Italian. Yeah, I guess you're right. Listen, 
I'm going to drug test you today. And it's going to come up positive. You know why? <laughs> He's like, no, it's not. Why? No, it is. <laughs> because I'm going to add drugs to your urine. <laughs> because you are a WAP. You're a Ginzo. You're a greaseball. And you're never going to make it in life. You want to play football? You're going to have a hard time. <laughs> you're going to have a really hard time. Because no head coach, no no offense, no defense is taking a risk on the WAP fucking up the play. And this really aided in Ricky's growth. This is good because this is like this was she like the fuel to the, the fire. Antagonist, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ricky did. He ends up killing her. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Because Gets away the thing with is, it too. He like the, there's absolutely nothing in the book about Ricky's Italianness. Other than this woman just hating him because he has some Italian blood in him. Right. And his, na- his last name is Spaganzi. Yeah. So she somehow is able to equate it with that. But I don't think that's fair. So, yeah. yeah Jim Jim Bloom, Bloom, I don't know if you remember. Jim Bloom, about two years after you got that story published, got me a book publishing deal. And it was my debut novel. Really? Yeah. I had just read um, Sally Rooney, great author. I had just read her two books, Conversation with Friends and Normal People. And I said, you know what? I really have to get into this world of Irish novels about, you know, relatable millennials. So I wrote a book called um, Along the Rain, right? And Along the Rain was a beautiful tale of an American student from Italy. Well, not from Italy. He's Italian, but he's from New York. And he's living in Ireland as a student at Trinity College. And it's such a beautiful story because, like, it's really, it has a lot to do with, like, love and passion and sexual relationships. So, like, the American students, it's like, hey, how you guys doing? I, I, I'm a man. I'm from Italy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and the Irish are like, well, who the fuck are you, man? Get the fuck out of here. We don't like your fucking kind around here. But then through adversity, he meets a girl named Sorcia. And she's like, you know, I really liked you. I, I come to love you. I really come to love you. I really, I really... <laughs> I like having sex with you. You're not going to have a hard time. <laughs> you're real. You actually, you're going to have, it's going to be easy for you. Oh, God. Then me and Joey co-wrote a novel after <laughs> that. That was take, take place in Wayne, right? And it was, it's, it, it said every, it's called Everybody is Emily. We, we needed, we, we know, we actually, uh, we were, this is a commission by Jim. Jim's like, I need a pulp, guys. I need something real sexy, real steamy that's going to sell quick and sell to the middle-aged woman looking to offer themselves. But I guess, man, I guess we can get into that sphere. We 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 know about the pulp novels. So we wrote a we wrote a book called The Gardener. And it was just about this guy. He had no one really knew where he's from, but he had like a kind of Louisiana Southern accent. And he comes in to live in the community of Packinac Lake in Wayne, New Jersey. And the book was just about this strapping young gardener fucking everyone's wife and taking over their families and like becoming a surrogate father to their kids. And his line was like so he would just like doing some gardening work and he'd be like how you doing today mrs stanton and she's like oh i'm good johnny how are you and he's like oh i'm good and then later that night he'd like approach them sexually and the wives would be like i can't but i'm falling so hard for you and johnny's catchphrase was always listen i don't think you love me i think you just love the idea of loving me You're not you you you're really lovable. You're not gonna have a hard time. Well, there was that famous scene where him and Emily fuck, and it was like he walks into her like one room cat filled apartment above uh, Trader Joe's. She's Mister Mittens, get off of that! What are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Emily, I just I just you know I see you all the time at the diner, and I just figured you need some company. I need more than that. I need company. <laughs> you are a little bit older than me, but. I find you very, very, very attractive. Well, well, let's just say you and me, we're making the chowder that they're going to be eating tomorrow, Um, tonight. Okay, Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I don't know. This is so crazy. I don't know what I'm doing. How do you feel about me, Emily? And then just as she's about to make the move, there's a knock at the door, and she's like, Well, who who is it? (laughs) And all of a sudden, the door opens, and it's Addison Ray in full spandex, and she's like, Dinner's going to be cold tonight, <laughs> asshole. Shoots and she Johnny. just shoots Johnny, shoots Emily down, and then the movie begins. From at, like Addison's the real star of the movie. Yeah. For the first hour, you trick the audience. 
And God, you think it's a whole different Addison thing? Addison Rae is now a movie star. I don't know if you heard. Yeah, three-picture deal. Three-picture deal with Netflix. After we're actually it. we're producing one of them. It's the Ragtime Ricky movie. <laughs> She's going to play Emily in the yeah. Emily biopic. Yep. That's crazy, dude. I'm That's, fucking I out think here. Th- I think it's really good for cinema. Yeah, I think the future of cinema is going to be great. Yeah. We're out here pitching fucking fastballs like Ragtime Ricky and the Irish Sex Book and uh, yeah, fucking Johnny the Gardener fucking everyone. And Ad- Addison Ray hits a woe on TikTok and now. Yeah. Three movies. Three movies. She's never been in a film in her life. I studied at some of the greatest acting schools in the world. And I haven't gotten shit. Yeah, but I that's, literally wrote that's the how line. it works. I've been really thinking. Look at my performance. If For those watching, you're going to have to look at me in the eyes. But for those listening, just listen to how good this is. I think that you're not in love with me. You just love the idea of loving me. And scene. Tell fucking Shut Addison Ray. Tell Addison Ray to try that out. Yeah, she's going to do good. I think she's going to do really good. She's going to sell a lot of films. She's going to probably win an Oscar. Let's guess the plot line of at least one of the three p- films she's going to do. So she started okay. off with the She's All That so remake, which here's, looked fucking here's, stupid. Here's the film. It's called it's called Save, Save the Clock, and it's pretty much... It comes out that the head of TikTok is running a sex ring, <laughs> and so TikTok is looking like it's going to shut down. But who can save us? That's right. Addison Ray, and she's gonna dress up like Tomb Raider, and it's gonna be her raiding the offices in New York. Or so in wherever. this one, she plays herself. Yeah, and so she's gonna be raiding the TikTok offices to save TikTok, and it's pretty much how does she do it? She puts a bullet between his eyes. All right, I guarantee you, at least one of the plot lines is like it's gonna be a movie called like Here I Go Again, <laughs> and it's gonna be like this movie where this high school senior keeps waking up on graduation day, and it's the same day, like. Like kind of like Groundhog Day, you know what I mean? Yeah. So she goes to sleep or whatever, and she wakes up, and it's graduation day again, and it's all about her trying to like make out with her crush or something, and then it turns out that her crush was a golden retriever the whole time, or something like well, that. Well, no, and then and then the part she comes finds in. out her nerd friend is actually the guy she wants to be with, and that's what breaks the time loop. No, but then also a big part that makes her figure out why it's happening is there's a part. Where Adam Sandler comes in and like the crazy guy from Waterboy and like his son and they're like, honey, we have something to tell you. And she's like, what do you mean? It's graduation day. And they put in a VHS and it's, <laughs> and it's, a, it's a video of her talk, telling herself about the car accident that she got in. And how she lost her memory. It's a sequel to Fifty First Dates, but with Addison <laughs> Ray. It's their daughter who was born with the same memory loss thing, even though that's not genetic. And then it's called Fifty Days of Graduation. Fifty First Graduation Dates. Fifty First Fifty Last Dates, cause she dies at the end. Oh shit! Oh shit! What's and the then Adam movie? Sandler comes in. He like the camera pans to him, and he's like, "Hey, how you doing now? My name is Adam Sandler, and I go." He's gonna be like. Addison, yeah, it's me, Adam Sandler. I'm here to tell you. Ooh, 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 oh my God, Adam Sandler, Addison Ray. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to that. He's one. gonna be like, she's gonna be like, I don't understand, Adam Sandler. I'm a TikTok star. Why is this happening to me? He's like, well, this is something you could have addressed yesterday. <laughs> You definitely didn't peek on the audio there. Yeah, I'm definitely not loud enough <laughs> to peek. Yeah, no, I mean it's great because this this will yeah, open this up is great re- things. This is really good where the movie industry is going. Because guys. I'm once a fan. it starts with Addison Ray, and then I think Fred, the guy Fred from back in the day, they're gonna sign him to a ten picture deal. Oh, to Fred! Now yeah. Fred's already. You remember he had a fucking Nickelodeon show, yeah. and that didn't last too long because he smoked crack. But I think at this point, Steve from Blue's Clues, he might come back. Oh, Steve from Blue's Clues. They're going to make a movie called Back and Bald. Yeah. It's, because it's, it's so looked, awkward he wore the hat. Well, like, he left Blue's Clues because of Because he was balding, yeah. but now he wore the hat. I don't know. Just fucking own your baldness, dude. It's not that crazy. Everyone's going bald. Dude, you got, La- you got Larry David in your corner. How much do you think they paid him for that? Dude, he definitely made some nice nice change off that. Yeah. Not you know like, that he's going to be on tour now? Like, it's going to be the fucking Steve from Blue's Clues tour they're going to give yeah, him. Yeah, it's going to be gonna, like... It's going to be like going to see Jordan Peterson. Oh, You're yeah. going to go see Steve, and like he's going to talk about life. No, but life. they're going to give him another fucking Blue's Clues show. He, they're going to start putting him in movies and shit. He's going to write a children's book. It's like Steve from Blue's Clues is fucking back. The the blues of clans the, the, the Steve of France. Yeah. The Steve of Sans. Steve is on Blue's. Oh, God. What a time to be alive. Entertainment's really fun right now, guys. It's definitely not the worst thing happening. Yeah. 
it's good though you know it's given opportunity to a lot of people who really worked hard to deserve it and that's just what I, that's all i care about you know me and Joey really want to get into a different form of entertainment. We want to be a double act, like on stage, like the old vaudeville days. What would our show be like, Joe? Uh, Howdy, I'm Matt, and this. You're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> You're gonna really have a hard time. Our show would be. It would take place in like the fifties. We've said it. it would take place in the fifties, and it would be like, "Damn it, he fucked my wife again," or something. And it would guys, just we're writing in. this play. It's gonna be called. Here we'll do we'll do let's do it let's do a little bit all right. Should we have another cigarette? Should we do another one on air? Yeah, yeah, we could do that. We this just is need... a preview for our play. Called. We just need... oh, oh my god! Wow! Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> no, dude. dude, this is so fucking crazy, dude. Whoa! Huh. Third Horn Investments. What, dude? I'm just what? I'm so excited. Dude. I love investing. So have you heard the news? I met a girl on Tinder last week, and she said she's into investing, and I said I love investing. Did you I hear? said it. Did you hear? Let me tell. Let me hear. Jim Bloom, founder and CEO of Third Horn Investments, comes out to the public. He is Satoshi Nakamoto. Oh my God! Oh, sorry, Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin. Yep. Identity hitherto unknown. Yep. But now we know who it is. It was Jim Bloom. Yep. What? <laughs> yep. Sh- Shiitake Musharado. Dude, I. I'm just, I've never been so excited no, in my life neither. about investing. Me neither. I or about anything, I, I should look, say. I, I look, I can't stop vibrating. I got, I got goose pimples. Do you yeah. have goose pimples? I have shakes. He's covered in goose pimples, folks. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm just so <laughs> excited. <laughs> I want to invest all my fucking money, dude. Uh, I just, oh, I just want dude. to invest. Oh, Guys, my God. You know what third someone taught me investment. really early on, and especially third horn, is that why would you want to ever have any money liquid in your... Uh, on your person. Any money that you have invested. in a bank account is losing value every year. Due every to day. And if you could be paying rent, you could be saving for a rainy day. Take that fucking money, throw it in an investment fund, and don't do it in any investment fund because a lot of those guys are fucking scam artists. Yep. Put it in the best, the one, the only third horn investments. Yep. Owned and operated by Jim Bloom, the best guy on the planet. I'm just AKA Satoshi Nakamoto. I'm so excited. I yeah. I'm just I can't even contain. Well, it's great it. because you can invest your money and when you when you do this with other companies, it's like, okay, we're going to set you up with life insurance, stocks, bonds, etc. Boring. Big buzzwords. Buzzword, Who gives blah, a fuck? Blah, blah, blah. Whereas Third Horn, it feels cool. You go in and they're like, "Listen, we're going to put some of your money into restaurants. We're going to put some of your money into commercial real estate." We're going to put some of your money into publishing. Listen, they love to diversify. And the beauty of it is, is when you diversify like that, it's fun. It's fun. Well, it's it's cool. You get to be a part of all these industries that you never once maybe even had an interest in. And now you you don't understand what the perks are. Yeah. You fucking get a call on Friday night from Jim Bloom. He personally calls you and says, hey, Cynthia, we got tickets to the new release of the new Salad Rooney novel. Yep. And you go down and you go to a book signing. And yeah. you're there, not in the back, not in the front. You're on the red carpet. You're VIP. Hey, I just owned this new commercial real estate market. They sell fried corn balls. You go there and get some free fucking corn yeah. balls at the pre-opening. Dude, a friend of mine invested, and they said, we're going to be putting some of your money into the film industry. And he's like, that's cool. What movies? And I don't know if you're familiar with the, re- the hit documentary, Kiki. But a friend of mine, he was able to actually put some of his money into that movie and not only see no returns, but see negative returns. Which you guys don't understand. In the film industry, that's a good thing. That's a win. Because you're shorting the film market. Right. Because and if you're you going to take that as a already, loss on taxes. You already sold enough tickets to make your money back and then some. Mm-hmm. But when you don't gross more, it's fine because then you don't have to have the, the, the movie in theaters for too long yep. and waste up all that time. Yep. Yep. It's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, I love that. On ice. Uh, it's ASMR now. Yeah. But listen, folks, we just want to let you know do how it. excited we are. Do with it. Third you got to do it. It's so much fun. You have no option. Go ahead and invest, guys. Tell Jim Bloom that the, the Good Crack Boys sent you. You're going to want to go to www.thirdhorninvestments.com. Tell him the code, Joe. And the code is... I wish I could have made money off Kiki. You're going to use that code to get... Up to fifty thousand dollars matched when you invest. Good times, good, good crack. times. Hey, tell Jimmy Bloom we sent you. Grab your investments by the horns <laughs> <laughs> for our play. Call we just need somewhere to ash it. Actually, we could do these cups. Yeah, good fucking points. So we don't get fucking fired. Um, 
Yeah, you're three, two, one cigarettes. You're the guy. Who, you're the guy who fucked my wife, and I'm the guy whose wife's been fucked. Okay. So in this play, it's the fifties. We work in New York City in like advertising or something. We work with accounts, and um, we're both businessmen and we're both good friends. But I fucked his wife, and he I don't know this yet, but he also fucked my wife. Yeah. And we're all fucking each other's wives. All right. Ready? What do you want from me, Charlie? I'm just a man, you know? I did what came natural. I'll tell you this, Jim. Another day in the big city, it's going really well. I'll tell you this. The numbers are looking good, and we're working really hard. I'm going to need 20 more cigarettes on my burger tonight. Calm down, Frankie. Listen to me. This account, it's not going to go well. The account's not going to go well? What do you mean? I got word from the boys out in Chicago. Turns out, the guys that are running this, communist. The commies, huh? We're going to have to kill those sorry sons of bitches. I'll tell you what. My wife tried telling me she wanted to be a commie once. I backhanded the hell out of her, and then we had our meatloaf. Whoa, Frankie, enough. How is your wife, by the way? How is my wife? You know, Jimmy. How is your wife? It's funny you mention that. She said something quite peculiar to me the other day. (laughs) She said oh, something yeah. along the lines of, oh, your cock isn't that great. Jimmy's cock is a lot better. Why would she be talking about your cock, Jimmy? What's don't going on between you and my wife? Did you fuck my wife? Frankie, don't play games with me. We're both men here. Did you fuck my wife? You know what? Yeah, I did. You know what? I've been saying it for years now, Frank. You're not a bigger man than me. Your wife needed to be satisfied. She needed a real man. A man with a grip that could hold on to a lead pipe and squeeze it. Real hard. That's me. And I'm not a man? I You're built, not half the man take, she deserves, Jim. Frank, I'm you telling mean? you. I take my I take my Model T apart and I put it back together. That doesn't make me a man? Come on, Frankie. How long we been working together? We went to yard school together. You know me. I'm what she needed. You couldn't handle her. Well, you know what then, brother? The cat is out of the bag. <laughs> I, too, have been fucking your wife. What? That's right. Rita? Yeah, that's right. I walked in the one day and Rita, she was fixing the sink, and I said, What the hell are you doing fixing the sink? That's a man's job. So I fixed it for her. Oh, I fixed it real good. Those pipes were leaky and they You're were swing. You're a goddamn swing. liar, Jimmy. I'm not no liar. You're a goddamn liar, Frankie. You know I'm not because I am a God fearing man and no God fearing you man. You know, is a liar. you know that my wife would never fuck a, a little sheepy boy like you. You couldn't even throw football when we were in yard school together. You're a little bitch. Well, you know what, Jim? Yard school was a long time ago. And let's just say I threw a touchdown and your wife read a snatch. Don't you dare say that about my wife. You know what I did to your wife? We had sex. We pushed the double beds together. That's the kind of guy I She am. brought you into our bedroom with our double beds? She brought me into the bedroom. We pushed the beds together. We did some crazy stuff. She put my penis in her mouth. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. Get the hell out of town. I'm telling the truth, Frankie. And now listen to this. You didn't fuck my wife. Because you know what? You know what? My wife loves me. Ever still. She still loves me. She never loved you and she never will. And neither did your wife. She loves me. Better off for me, but not for you. Yes, it's good for me too. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. It's good for me because your wife loves me and my wife still loves me. It's so good for you. Yes. No, it's not good for you. Why? Because you're a liar. No, it's it's really good for you. It's good. Oh, no, it's not. What do you mean? It's really good. My, my, your wife and my wife both love me. No one loves you even despite that you may be fucked Rita. But you can't prove that without any other proof. You're going to have a hard time. (laughs) You're going to have a really hard time explaining that to her. Uh, Uh, End scene. End scene. That's my wife. Uh, I'm excited. That's going to be that's going to be a killer. There's going to be a line. The the name of the play. We're going to do it at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Scotland. It's going to be called. Hey, that's my wife. Yep. And it'll be me and Joe just smoking a thousand of these prop cigarettes or three, two, ones. I want to be. With my with my character, I want to be the newsy boy that made it. You know, yeah. yeah. Like I was pushing papers and I got I, I made it to the top. And I, but you know what? You but got, I still have it in me. I'll sell you the paper. I'll give you whatever you want. You want the New York Times? You want the Daily News? We got everything here, sir. I'm gonna be real slow talking, like a real deliberate but stupid guy, and I'm like, hey, listen, it's my wife. 
What are you talking about, Frank? You didn't fuck my wife. Please, don't... You read the news? Robert Redford fucked all of our wives, and it was great. It was wonderful. <laughs> Robert Redford. <laughs> Gerald Ford fucked my wife. <laughs> First, you tell me you're fucking my wife. Then I found out Franklin Delano Roosevelt fucked my wife, too. The guy can't even walk. He had polio, for God's sakes. She had to sit on his wheelchair lap. And me? Even worse for me. I found my wife. She was deep in a Hooverville. She was going crazy in a <laughs> Hooverville. Just fucking hobos. Fucking hobos in a Hooverville. That's what I get from my <laughs> wife at Hoover. That's what the plot of the thing would be, is we find out that we fucked each other's wives, but then we also find out that everyone has fucked our wives, so we relate. My wife. <laughs> I walk in last week. Three guys from the office, Roger, Jim, and Frank are there. They're all having their way with her. And she said to me, she looks me in the eyes and goes, Close the door. <laughs> My own wife. What kind of world are we living in, Frankie? <laughs> you can't believe the fidelity of your own wife. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you good. what, that greaseball Italian Frank Sinatra, he had a way with her again. That fucking olive oil voice singing Wap Dago. <laughs> Fucked my wife. <laughs> the, he really... That Frank Sinatra. He really, that Sinatra. He's a real wop, and he's got an olive you oil voice. You know he voice. uses olive oil with that? I'll tell you a story about Frank Sinatra. He came in to the diner I was working at in Hoboken in 56, and that dirty greaseball wop had the goal to order a bowl of spaghetti at an American diner, and guess what? He didn't pay. That fucking cheap day go wop greaseball fucking walked out without picking up the check. <laughs> I hope he goes back to Sicily or wherever Goomba Wap fucking place he came from and he fucking chokes on a piece of garlic. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, hey, folks, we're at that time. Yeah, we're getting to the end here. Same old as always. Good Crack Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, uh, uh, YouTube. We're doing more stand-up this yep. well. No, actually, this will be out of date. So. Yeah. We're going to do stand-up. Yeah. Mondays and Wednesdays, usually, at the Bronx River Yacht Club in the comedy shop. You could find us doing open mics. Yeah. Come out and support Come us. Come hang out. You can be the only audience member at the open mic that's not there to do stand-up. <laughs> and for that, we would appreciate you. Yes. But, hey, stay funky. Stay groovy. Smoke them if you got them, folks. Smoke them if you got them. Check this shit out. Thank you to the Wallet Wallet. Bow.